you know, I'm hesitant to do this one. I, I only get so many of these, you know. Noah's going to be back next week, and this is my last Elia tribe for what I imagine is probably another seven years till we pull off Noah's legs and replace him with moon boots or something. And honestly, I want to spend it talking about pretty much anything other than what I'm going to. I, I want to tell you about how my father helped me to atheism in the way that he practiced his religion. I want to tell you about what I learned about spirituality from the four times I had group sex, about the gift I got for my first suicide attempt. Hell, I'd rather just sit here and make fun of the Kalam cosmological argument, but I can't. And you know why? Because someone's talking shit about you. Yeah, you, listening to this podcast. And I won't fucking stand for it. So, Twitter mentions be damned, here we go. No... New atheism has not merged with the far right. And I, I just want to say, if you're thinking to yourself, what? Of course it hasn't merged with the far right. What the fuck are you talking about? Go back to that group sex thing. I envy your inbox because as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, someone has once again written an article making just that claim in Salon magazine. And no less than 30 people emailed us about it. So... Rather than talking about something fun, once again, I got to explain just how wrong and insulting that headline is. So let's begin with the term new atheism. Now, the author of the article is defining new atheism as those four guys who wrote books that were relatively popular in 2004. And also a few jerks who had nothing to do with the atheist movement, but they prove his point so them too. And even if you accept that bullshit definition, no, they haven't merged with the alt-right. Look, a few of them are assholes, wrong about important questions of social justice for sure, but they haven't merged with the far right. And that's the fucking headline, merged with the far right. You know who's merged with the far right? Evangelical Christians. Those assholes in Charlottesville chanting Jews will not replace us? Christians, politicians writing bills and making it illegal to teach critical race theory, stripping people of voting rights, defending the rights of cops to murder unarmed black men in the street. Christians, the Braveheart cosplayers who tried to overthrow the government in January. So Christian that they Facebook lived their prayer circle to Jesus. That's who the far right are. And that's what they're doing in this country. You don't get to scale the meaning of far right back to interviewed a racist on their podcast when it's convenient for your dialogue. And it's not a defense of those authors to point that out. It's a defense of the English language. And if you think I'm kidding, I promise you this, less than 24 hours from the release of this episode, someone is going to defend that headline to me by pretending not to know what the word merged means. But that aside, most people who read that article aren't going to read the words new atheists and think of four authors and a couple of jerks. They're going to think of atheists who are new. Again, because, you know, of how words work. Like, if I said new music these days sucks or I don't enjoy any new movies, would you intuit that I meant the four best-selling CDs of 2004? Of course not. You'd think I meant the movie makers of today in general. And since that's the claim that a lot of people are going to read, let's break that one down. The one the author of the article is kind of knowing that you're going to hear. Is the new atheist movement merged with the far right? Let's, let's start at home. Maybe the author means podcasters. So let me check out the top of the atheist charts for that one. Uh, nope, that's Hemet, Tom and Cecil, Seth, Thomas, us, and Ono, oh Ross, and Carrie. So unless Carrie went too deep in a KKK meeting and never came back, no. And yes, Sam Harris has a podcast with an audience that dwarfs ours. But you notice that it's not a podcast about atheism. It's not in the atheism category. And he doesn't talk about atheism on it. And that's not a coincidence because when Sam did start talking out of his ass, the atheist community is where his pushback came from. He turned to the Joe Rogan explicitly not skeptical alpha brain pill taking audience for a reason because the atheist community wouldn't have him anymore. So maybe he means convention organizers, right? Like that would be a fairly convincing argument if atheist conventions were populated by far-right speakers and advocates. Well, 
Luckily for me, we've been to the largest atheist conventions in the world over the last couple of years. So let's run through that list. Um, AACon, no. NanoCon, no. Skepticon, mm-mm. ReasonCon's probably not happening again, but I was at the last one, and I don't remember anyone burning a cross. That said, I did turn in early, so maybe they did it after I went to bed. Oh, maybe the author means the largest skeptical convention in the world, QED, run by our dear friends Marsh and Andy, who work countless hours for less pay than they could make selling hot peanuts on the streets of London to ensure that their convention is safe and welcoming who put in countless safety measures to make people feel comfortable and loved. Sure as fuck ain't them. Are you picking up why I'm pissed off yet? Look, these people might not be who the author of the article meant, but it's who they fucking smeared, and they don't deserve it. Maybe it's the blogs, Hemet again, PZ Myers, or the activists, Nick Fish, Jeff Blackwell, Allison Gill, Andrew Seidel. No, 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 and no. So who does that leave us? Well... That leaves us you, doesn't it? That's the only other kind of new atheist I can think of. Atheists as a demographic. But we've got some data on you. It's actually kind of our job to report on this kind of thing. And survey after survey after study says that you tend to be among, if not the most liberal, accepting, pro-gay marriage, pro-trans rights, religious demographic. You're the least likely to believe in far-right conspiracy theories. Hell, you're even least likely to watch Fox News. So what the fuck is this author talking about? Assholes on Twitter? I mean, can you think of any other social justice movement that we judge on the merit of its YouTubers, let alone a religious denomination? Hello, Salon Magazine? Hold the presses. Yes, the article is called How Jews Merged with the Far-Right Because Ben Shapiro Exists. Because... Social justice is what atheism is. I mean, yes, it is also the answer to the world's easiest philosophical question. And it's a religious demographic because everybody's got to fill in a bubble on the survey. But once you got that out of the way, the mission of atheism as a movement is social justice. It's stopping evil at its root. It's taking away where it gets all its fucking money because religion is where the far right actually gets its money. Religion is how they get their laws passed. Religion is what's merged with the far right. In effect, so obvious that if the title of that article had been religion has merged with the far right, the body of the article would have had to have been duh. And make no mistake, the author of this article and the dozens of others like it will assure you that they're all for social justice. They're all for the atheist movement in theory. They're just trying to clean it up first. But what movement has ever been made better by lying about it? What cause has been improved by scaring new people away from it? By telling those who are already there that they're unsafe and unwelcome? How in the shit fuck could that possibly help anyone, let alone a movement? And why do I suspect that these aren't excuses they would make or accept about any other social justice movement? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but if I am, someone better tell them not to get too excited about Black Lives Matter. After all, have you heard all the stuff Al Sharpton said in 2007? Or more ridiculous still, sometimes they believe that atheist activism is a thing of the past. I mean, what's the point in talking about the harms of religion anymore? Surely religion hasn't done anything problematic lately. Let's focus on the real problem. An associate professor at Portland State University who can't get tenure because he's the campus joke. Because you know what this article is? It's an excuse. It's an excuse to sit back and do nothing till the perfect movement comes along. Then, then when there are no assholes, when there are no real disagreements, that's when I'm really going to roll up my sleeves and do something. You guys keep fighting the good fight. Keep trying to fight back the tide of theocracy. I'll be here in the back telling everyone what assholes you are. But just as soon as the movement's perfect, count me in. So why am I mentioning it? Why not just ignore it and let it go away because non-existent God knows it will? Well, because I believe in this movement. I'm honored to be a part of it, however small. And look, I, I know we're not a big part. I know that I won't even be a footnote in the history of the atheist movement, but I've been lucky enough to witness parts of it. When the history books look back on the people who did lead our movement, at the very least, I'll be able to say, hey, I was there. I even got to do the diatribe while they were getting their dental work done. I did my best to help. 
I cheered as loud as I could from the cheap seats. And I won't let that be ruined by so-called critics from the outside any more than I'll let it be defined by the jerks on the inside. I hope you won't either. Look, I'm not going to lie to you or sugarcoat it as a movement. We've got a lot of work to do, and we have so far to go. But we're going. We are going. Come with us.